Hello, Ben Davidson. Hello, Ben. This is Randall Carlson. Good morning, folks. Yeah, that's going to be happening in a few hours later today. But we have a lot to hit right now, though, including a forecast of disaster from people I consider to be geniuses. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star brings the northern coronal holes towards center disk. Meanwhile, behind the eastern limb on the left, we see bright points of potentially incoming active regions. Eyes on those. But taking a look at the solar wind next, and we're going to go from the top down, phi angle flip top right and blue should be very obvious. It did come with a density spike and moved some of the other telemetries, but also presents the solar system north-south reversal in the wind plasma. Geomagnetism was headed for zeros before that occurred, but has come back up slightly towards now the higher end of quiet range. Most important quake of the last day was not the biggest. 5.1 in Nevada continues the above average uptick of intraplate quakes in the United States this year. And shifting only slightly east and stretching northward into Canada, we have tonight's top severe weather threat. The line of storms fires up tonight as the diurnal energy cycle crafts an exceptionally welcoming environment for those storms. Our first science of the day begins at that animation they did of giant star spots. If the scene almost humorously out of scale to you when we first saw it, you weren't the only one. But now imagine that pretty much the entire star is covered with things like this. Well, that is one explanation being given for the recent dimming of the Betelgeuse star, and I think it's questionable. We saw the hazy surroundings in previous images, and now this new one simply isn't making a ton of sense. They believe they detect changes in the corona, and sure, it just shed off its outer layer, causing the dimming that we saw earlier in the year. But mega star spots is a bit of a leap for me. But up next is something I can really get behind. Paleomagnetism locked in ice. Believe it or not, the magnetic reversal dating has never really studied the ice evidence, and now it's been shown they really should. This could give great insight into some of these events in the past that seem to be a bit scattered about in time when we look at different studies, even though nobody really denies it was just one global event. We're coming back to DrRoySpencer.com, and despite his complete shunning of every one of my outreach efforts, I can't help it. He's just top tier. Showing here what caused me to write the president of the AGU in that video last week, while CMIP5 models in yellow exceeded the actual global temperatures in blue, CMIP6 models are doing an even worse job. The reaction of most is to claim global warming is a bigger problem, we need to give them more money, and their funders are freedom. But in daylight, we know better. Well folks, this is not good. Not the science, the math, the background, or research, or extrapolation, or interpretation, or conclusion. It's the implications of some of my own personally most respected solar scientists on the planet when they make their new Solar Cycle 25 prediction, and it doesn't fit with what the rest of the world has been saying. While most forecasts, including my own, based on solar polar magnetic field strength, indicates that we should have a slightly weaker upcoming cycle, but more or less the same as the last one, which would be the green dot, these calculations in the paper suggest the purple dot will be our peak, matching some of the highest activity of this grand solar cycle, and with Earth's magnetic field down now about 20% and weakening further, with the major surge in that weakening occurring during the Carrington event of 1859, I have to say, I hope their forecast for major solar activity is wrong, because if they are right, our chances of getting through this cycle without a major hit drop to almost zero. Then again, that's why we're here. In case you were still sleeping for the opening, I've got 11 minutes of me and Randall Carlson coming up later tonight, the first of many we have in mind for the coming weeks and months. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.